Welcome to week 29 of the weekly UAS news update. And this week I've got four topics I want to cover. Some of them are updates to things that we've covered in the past. The first one is the FAA uh, hobbyist knowledge test. There's an update and I want to cover this. The next one is also something we covered before, which is the ULC tort law. There's also been an update and this is actually a good one. Next, I want to cover something also that we've covered in the past, which is the AI versus DRL pilot uh, challenge that they've had. There's been some results. And the last one is a new topic, which is Preci Precision Hawk is getting uh, $32 million for creating new things. So we'll talk about that. All right, let's get to it. First week I want to cover this week is something that we've talked about in the past, which is the FAA aeronautical test. And there's been an update. Uh, as you know, the FAA has mandated, has been mandated to put in place a knowledge test for hobbyists, something that we don't have in place right now. And a couple of weeks ago, they had asked people to submit uh, proposals in order to be selected to give them some feedback on how to uh, give the test and also on what should be in the test. So. Uh, the list has been published. Uh, the list includes uh, big universities like Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. You have bin manufacturers like DJI, for example. The AMA is in there, the Academy of Model, uh, Model Aeronautics, and also the DRL, the Drone Racing League, is in there amongst other people. So uh, the test will be required for all hobbyists in the near future, and uh, that includes also remote pilots. I've had several questions in the past about this. Yes, as a remote pilot, we, you will still have to do the test. Uh, don't ask me how I feel about this. And then uh, there's also at this point no uh, indication of the content or of the price of the test or what it's going to be. So I'll put a link here from the FA uh, news update and then you can go and see more information if you want. Next thing is a topic that we've covered in length in the past and I'm going to put a link up here so that you can go and see the video that explains what the ULC is and what tort law is. I, I did this video with uh, Sarah Nelson who's an amazing um, UAS attorney, knows drone law like nobody else, and she kind of discussed it with me, uh, kind of asking, answering some of my questions. So uh, if you're not familiar with this, I highly recommend you check out this video and, and learn more about it. But in a few words, the ULC was trying to uh, propose uniform law. That's what they do. Uh, it's the Uniform Law Committee. That's what ULC stands for. And they were trying to create laws that would be uh, given to the states so they can be applied for each of the states regarding drone flights. Now, when they started, they started kind of on a rocky uh, foundation, I should say. They were trying to limit the first 200 feet of airspace and take that away from the FAA and take that away from drone pilots. And eventually the industry got involved and a bunch of stakeholders got into these meetings with the ULC and they came up with something that uh, would have worked for most everybody, a good compromise. And uh, it was supposed to be voted on last summer. Now, days before the meeting or even hours, I guess, before it was supposed to be voted, a new group came into the, uh, the picture, the property rights people, and they decided that they were really not happy with what was in there. And uh, they were never involved in the drafting process in the first place, but the ULC decided, decided to uh, de delay the vote on what they had agreed upon with the UAS industry. Now, fast forward a couple months, and uh, this week they actually met again, met with all the stakeholders again, with the UAS side, with the, the property rights people and the ULC, and then they came up to nothing. There was basically no discussion, there was no agreement, they couldn't come up with uh, anything that worked for everyone. So the ULC basically said, we're gonna table this issue for now, and when remote ID comes up, uh, if you don't know about remote ID, check out a couple weeks ago, we talked about it. Uh, when remote ID comes up, then we will bring this back to the table. So I think this is actually somewhat of a win. I don't think that uh, it was a great idea in the first place to have these uniform laws in place uh, that could have been actually pretty restrictive. So um, we'll wait for remote ID, which uh, is the solution to a lot of issues that are going on right now in this industry and hopefully move forward from there. Next thing is kind of a cool thing. We have, uh, I talked about this a few weeks ago, we had uh, the DRL, the Drone Racing League, had created this own racing environment for uh, teams that wanted to build a drone that is entirely flown with AI. And um, 
and they had all these races. I think it was four or five races total. Last one was done, and then they crowned a, a, a team, the victory team, which was called MavLab. And MavLab actually won a million dollars. Yeah, that's right, a million dollars to basically create some more uh, things in here, uh, some more AI and some more uh, drones that are going to be flying faster and faster. Now, the, the deal with this was that the, the winning team was going to compete against one of the best pilot, if not the best pilot of the DRL. Uh, his name is Gab707. And uh, they had the contest and it uh, turns out that the human actually won. I think this is cool. This is, uh, this is a great way to get more technology out there. Um, especially with AI. So uh, expect to see more of these contests, except expect some of these drones to get faster and faster with AI as they start learning a little bit better. And um, let's wait and see a couple more years and see if they can actually beat an actual human pilot. So I'll put a link right here in the description so you can go and see the article about this. Last thing I want to talk about is Precision Hawk, which is a company that does a whole lot of different things actually in the drone world. Uh, they announced this week that they've raised $32 million in order to build what they call the next generation of software and services. Now, Precision Hawk, as it is, provides uh, enterprise software and solutions for different uh, sectors, including the agriculture sector and the energy sector. Um, they also run the website, the Drone Pilot Network, that you may know, that's called Droners.io. Now, uh, not really a platform that I recommend. There's a, a lot of uh, of really low ball offers on this website. And, uh, and it's one of the critique from a lot of people in this industry is that Droners.io has been basically dragging a race to the bottom for drone pilots. So this is a service that's similar to Drone Up, which I think does a much better job and Drone Base, which uh, still has pretty low payment on Drone Base, but Drone Up offers much better um, missions, I think, in terms of payout and in terms of the, the variety of different types of missions. So with that being said, so. Precision Hawk, big company out there, uh, obviously is gonna get a lot bigger very soon with that $32 million. So we'll see what they come up with and I'll report when I hear more. With that being said, this is it. This is it for this week. I hope you guys have a great weekend. As always, if you need the one part 107 uh, training, you can use this coupon right here with our amazing course uh, that uh, teaches you everything you need to know and more to become a remote pilot. Uh, so far, over 6,000 people have joined in this course and the uh, numbers are growing very quickly every day. So uh, this is it. Have a great weekend. Happy flying and I'll see you guys next week.